I declare this congregation to be in session. Please remain standing and join with us in singing the University Waiata, the words of which are found on page 12 of your program and on the screen above the stage.
Please be seated. Tenakoto Katoa. Namihi ki aratu kuanaro ite tihahanga kanoi hairi kotu hairi otiatu. Kiatato ti kanoi orati e hui hui ne iraro i te maru o ruahini tararua monga. Tenakoto rengatani ki manawatu. Kanui ti mihi ki akoto. Narira tenakoto tenakoto. Kiora ano tato katoa. Vice Chancellor, fellow Massey University Council members, members of the university community, members of the Manawatu Campus Graduation Committee, distinguished guests, graduands, and families. I extend a very warm welcome to you all to this spring graduation for 2020, the second of five ceremonies. My name's Alistair Davis and I am a member of the Massey University Council, the group responsible for overseeing the university's governance. It's my great pleasure today, on behalf of the Chancellor, to preside over this graduation ceremony and confer qualifications to the successful students of Massey University. For nearly a hundred years, Massey has been part of the fabric of New Zealand's economy and culture. And for our graduates, it continues to be a launch pad out into the wider world. We not only help students shape their own future, we help to shape the future of New Zealand and the wider world. At Massey, you see, we strive to solve real world problems and thus make a difference in people's lives. Through the combined efforts of our research and teaching, new solutions and discoveries are made to address the challenges that face us all. Graduates of Massey University complete their chosen course of study with more than mere knowledge. They leave with the capability and confidence to change the world they live in, to establish new pathways, to lead the way forward, to uh, make life better for those around them. We are immensely proud of the entrepreneurial spirit that our graduates possess. This week, Massey University is bestowing a total of 112 qualifications on 895 students over five ceremonies. In fact, a total of 1,091 students are graduating at these ceremonies or in absentia. At this ceremony, degrees will be conferred and diplomas awarded in the College of Humanities and Social Sciences, a total of 206 in, purpose, in person, including six PhDs, two doctorates of education and one doctorate in clinical psychology, plus a further 41 in absentia. Graduations are festive occasions and one of the biggest celebrations of academic success. While today is about you, the graduands, it's also about your friends and your family who encouraged and supported you in good times and in bad, and they're here to acknowledge your success. For those of you with family and friends who are unable to join us in person today, please remember that our ceremonies are streamed live on the Massey University website, so feel free to share the link with loved ones to let them be part of this wonderful celebration too. So to those of you who are preparing to accept your parchment, I encourage you, as you await your moment on the stage, to take a moment to reflect on the events that have led you to this point the sacrifices and the hardships, the triumphs and successes, the friends that you've made along the way, the people that helped you through, and the experiences that have become your student journey at Massey University. And to those of you in the audience, when your loved one takes to the stage, don't hold back. Be exuberant, be loud, okay? Because they're few seconds on the stage mean all the more for you being here. So please don't be afraid to contribute to their experience. Now, it would be remiss of me not to acknowledge that 2020 has indeed been a year like no other. The impact of COVID-19 on the university 
and to each of our daily lives this year, it's been immense. Yet, through adversity comes resilience. Through hard times comes strength. The graduates here today, many of whom completed their studies under unique conditions, are to be congratulated. Your perseverance, flexibility, and resilience in completing your qualifications show you're well prepared for life after study and to have the skills to face with confidence the road ahead, no matter what it brings. For the university, the investments that we have made to date will serve us well, and the strategic vision of the university remains strong. Massey will meet the challenges and disruptions yet to come with confidence and will continue to deliver world-class research and teaching for our students and society at large. Now, turning our attention back to today and the celebrations at hand, I am very pleased that the nation's alert levels are such we're actually able to hold this ceremony, this prestigious event. So my thanks to the academic staff and the council members seated behind me and the many professional staff who've put in hard work, time and effort into this occasion. Graduation is always a special event for the university. Graduates, by the end of today, you will all be part of the Massey alumni family, with more than 150,000 people all around the world. I welcome you to this new whānau, and I hope that through the many connections that it offers, that your careers will be supported and your lives will be enhanced. I say this because the university cares about you. You are each part of the Massey University legacy, Part of a story already written, but also part of the chapters yet to come. The voice of you, our Taira, our students, it's a key part of the narrative of our university, and it's important we listen to you and chart our future direction together. You see, university education changes lives. The lives you stand to lead, having achieved the qualifications you're receiving today, will be transformed as a result of the commitments that you've shown to earn them. So graduates, congratulations once more. Continue to work hard, take all the opportunity that life gives you. I urge you to stay connected to, the, to your alma mater and your university family through the Alumni Association. I know that you will continue to strive to aim high and succeed in whatever you choose to accomplish in your life. Do us proud. No rira, tenakoto, tenakoto, tenakoto katoa. By the authority of the Council of Massey University, I, Alistair Davis, Acting Chancellor, will now award the certificates and diplomas and confer the degrees on those to be presented and on those in absentia. Senior lecturers from the School of English and Media Studies, Dr. Thom Conroy and Dr. Kim Worthington, will call the names of the graduates and recipients of certificates and diplomas in the College of Humanities and Social Sciences. Pro Vice Chancellor Professor Cynthia White from the College of Humanities and Social Sciences will hand out the scrolls. Acting Chancellor, I have the honor to present for the Diploma in Arts the candidates I'm about to name. Ying Chi. <laughs> Fu Hong Jian Hawick. Robert Desmond Whale. <laughs> Acting Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Bachelor of Arts, the graduands I'm about to name. Catherine Patricia Bailey. Isaac Richard Bennett. Georgia Grace Bishop Matthews.
Lisa Busenko. Emma Grace Booth. Kate Monique Brokenshire. Melissa Jane Brunston. Summer Michelle Buckingham. Brenna Michelle Casey. Helen Rose Elizabeth Clark. Michelle Linar Clausen. Gay Therese Clifton. Taylor Cowley. Catherine Therese Davis. Courtney Dawn Davis. Kate Holly Denzel. Kylie Jo Francis Dooley. Megan Sasha Dykstra. Rebecca Lee Irtuali. Grace Catherine Fifield. Sarah Miriam Finley. Hannah Cornelia Goes. Georgia Lindsay Gill. Nicole Jade Glebski. Samantha Ray Goyle. Deborah Carissa Rose Goland. Holly Grant. Courtney Jane Grobe. Devin Shiana Harnett. Demi Lee Haydock. Claire Marion Hicks. Jemina Teroja Ho Haye. Rochelle Lorraine Hudson. Armar Ermar Bin Edros. Te Kotuku Rerenga Tahi, Erwin Staten. Leanne K. Jack. Petra Rose Joyce. Ni Rulati Ra Akila Binta Karmar Ranziman. Ashley Koch. Georgia Renee Leg. Linda Diane McKenzie.
Francis Louise Menez. Adrian Paula Martin. Trent Tara McDonnell. Brandy Mae McGrath. Nicole Elizabeth McGregor. Robert Neil McKee. Sean Barry McNamara. Rovlin Diana Milford. Lisali Oli Mipa Luana Moala. Amanda Marie Nicholson. Angeline Martina Nicola Ao. Tao Ilo Ola Aninga. Branya Ratuhi Olanzeki Scholz. Kristen Malia O'Reilly. <laughs> Margaret Parsons. <laughs> Bridget May Perry. <laughs> and Elise Eden Joy Peterson. Petra Press. Danielle Bridget Proctor. Georgia Lucy Robinson. Angela Lauren Russell. Mary Rose Scanlon. Ariel Natalia Scott. Claire Kathleen Brown Selwood. Harrod James Gilbert Christopher Satan Walker. Jonathan Ian Soden. Leanne Elizabeth Tate, Massey Scholar. Sarah Hinara Tike Clark. Ger Gerard Kere Kareoma Telford. Catherine Claire Prince. Oh, sorry, wrong, wrong page. Oh. <laughs> Leah Lorraine Thompson. Karen Sarah Thompson. Shay Michael Turner. Laura Van Egden. <laughs> Shannon Cynthia Vandegoot. Okay. Benjamin Mark Westrenra. Yeah. Siobhan Louise Williamson.
Shayla Claire Wilson. Sophie Catherine Carnes Wood. Tyla Dawn Wood. Josh Young. Deborah Ann Youthhead. Acting Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the co-joint degree of Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science, the graduate one I am about to name. Sarah Leslie De Bruyne. <laughs> Acting Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Bachelor of Communication, the graduate ones I'm about to name. Christiana Louise Humphreys. <laughs> Catherine Claire Prince. Zach Nicholas Rogers. Olivia Doreen Woodmass. <laughs> Acting Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Bachelor of Education, the graduate ones I'm about to name. Tahara Abara. <laughs> Sharon Leslie Burbich. Michael Callahan. <laughs> Acting Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Bachelor of Resource and Environmental Planning, the graduate ones I'm about to name. Zachary Miles Chisholm. <laughs> William James Craig. Christian Keith Ross Davy. <laughs> Hannah Elizabeth Pettengill. <laughs> Crystal Olive Pilkington. <laughs> Ella Ruby Bell Sparrow, First Class Honors Massey Scholar. Max Joseph Turver. Turver. <laughs> Kim Anok Volper, First Class Honors. <laughs> Acting Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Teoha Ta Tairangi. Bachelor of Teaching Māori Medium, Diploma Māori Education, the graduate ones I'm about to name. Tenia Ruai McClatchy Mita. Karnia Shaden Mihiri Kare Atania. Thank you, Acting Chancellor. It's now my pleasure to invite Professor Richard Shaw to address the graduates. Richard Shaw first came to Massey in 1982, and um, a short time, spell of time working overseas aside, has been at the university more or less ever since. His three degrees, 
the first in social work, the second in social policy, and the third in politics, are all from Massey, and he has held more or less every teaching position on offer, from tutor right through to professor. Clearly something is going on between him and this particular university, he may explain. His research work has to do with government ministers and parliamentary democracy. But the thing that keeps him up at night is the relevance of the humanities and social sciences in the 21st century. His purpose in life will be complete when the phrase, I'm just doing a BA, will have fallen into disrepair. Richard. Thank you, Acting Chancellor. Te hau kainga, tēnā koutou. E ngā mana, e ngā reo, tēnā koutou. Ngā mihi nui, kia koutou katoa nau mai, haere mai ki tēne hui. What the Acting Chancellor was good enough not to say is that usually, I've never done this before, but usually when I speak in public I just stand up and open my mouth and see what comes out. Um, but I'm not going to be doing that today because sometimes that can end badly. Um, what I would like to do is to address a brief set of comments to three important groups of people in this theatre. People over there, the people behind me, and the people over here, and there was a line over there, and there's Veronica Tafai who's up there as well. Mostly I sit with this lot, but I've also been in that part of the crowd three times and I've sat in that part of the crowd with my partner when we've watched our own daughters graduate. And it occurred to me when I was asked to deliver the short address between five and seven minutes, it comes in at about 8.35, so I'm a little over length, that the thing that we're here to celebrate, which is the graduation of you lot over there, can't happen without each of these three groups. So I'd like to direct short comments to each of you. To group number one, the whānau, the families, the mums and the dads, the carers, the kids, the aunties, the uncles, the nans, the koro. Some of you will have been to these kinds of events before, but for others of you, this is the first time that you have celebrated one of your people, one of your whānau, walking across this kind of stage in this kind of place. And all of you are welcome here. And you should know that what your person has done is a very big deal indeed. There's a lazy myth that does the rounds in Aotearoa, New Zealand, which has that everybody's at a university these days. Well, that's false news. Only 10% of the people who live in this country and who are aged 15 years of age or over are at a tertiary institution at any one point in time. So that means that what your person has done is significant, it's important, it's worthy of celebration. But there's something in particular that I would like to say to group number one, and that is thank you. <laughs> On behalf of the acting chancellor, the vice chancellor, other members of the group who are sitting up here, I would like to thank you for entrusting us with your people, with your kids, with your mokupuna, with your parents and with your partners for the time that it has taken them to complete their qualification with us. You know, in some respects, this ceremony is really about you fellas and fellasses. You're not the one who gets to dole up and get their hair done and stroll across the stage, but you have played critical roles at different times during your person's studies. Do you recall that time that you sat on the other end of the phone and listened to them? Listened to them pour their hearts out to you because they were so homesick? You remember those holidays that they came home and they just collapsed, exhausted, and you fed them and you cared for them and you sent them back to us, restored. And all those meals you cooked and all those dishes you washed and all those bedtime stories you read while your beloved sat up until some ungodly hour of the night finishing off that bloody assignment. <laughs> we know that you did all those things. More importantly, so did they. So, to group number one, thank you. 
Beside me and in the wings off stage is a group of professional and academic staff from the university and their group number two. And what may not be clear to you lot out there is quite how much this evening means to this lot up here. Because every person on this stage will have at least one student graduating tonight who has touched them in some way. Someone who they've seen walk through the academic fire and emerge on the other side. Someone who has battled and battled and battled with sick kids and bad hair days and dark nights of the soul to be here tonight. Someone who has gifted that staff member one of the great joys to be had from the work that we do, which is the moment. It happens in the middle of a class, it happens in a phone call, it happens in an email, it happens in a stream post, when one of you lot says, ah, now I see. Because when that happens, we know that for that student, something has shifted and the world will never look quite the same again. And that we have played a role in that. That is no small thing to have contributed to. So when you see someone stand up on the stage when the student wanders across, that's what's going on. That's us saying, good on you. That's us saying, thank you. Group three, the graduates, you lot. We know what it took for you to get here tonight. We know the trepidation that came with enrolling in your first course at Massey University. We know the fear that you might not belong here, that you might not really be good enough, that you might not be one of us. Tonight you become one of us. We know that feeling when the research question just wouldn't come into focus. And the literature refused to make sense, assuming you could find the damn stuff in the first place. <laughs> we know that awful sensation that you get in the puku when the time is running out. And we know what it took to overcome those things. We know what you have achieved and we applaud you for it. There are two final things we know. The first is what it means to graduate with an academic qualification in the arts. We know that people sometimes look at you funny when you say you're doing something in the humanities or the social sciences. Not always, not so much if you're doing a Bachelor of Communication, a Bachelor of Resource and Environmental Planning, a B.Ed, a Grad Dip Teaching, or Te Aho Tatairangi, the Bachelor of Teaching and Learning Kura Kaupapa Māori. But sometimes a student will say, oh, just doing a B.A. As if to apologise for not having taken something that sounds just a bit more like a job, like a degree in being shovel-ready, perhaps. <laughs> but the world of work is changing. The former CEO of Westpac Bank, a woman called Lynn Cobbley, has made it clear, and I'm quoting her here, that we're not focusing so much on the traditional skill set that we once thought was necessary in banking, financial modelling, accounting, commerce, Rather, we're looking for people who display diversity of thought, critical thinking skills, cultural awareness, communication and collaboration skills. End of quote. And some years ago, 2013, the good people at Google crunched all of their employment data, all of their remuneration data, all of their promotions data in an attempt to identify the skills that characterised the top employees at Google. And the results were a bit surprising. Computer programming ability came in at number eight. I just want to say that again because I love saying this. <laughs> Computer programming ability came in at number eight. The top skills were communicating and listening well, possessing insights into other people's values and points of views, having empathy towards one's colleagues, being a good critical thinker, and being a problem solver. And I am pretty sure that you will have found each of those things in the learning objective set for virtually every single course that you completed with us. Can I just make this blindingly clear? Bankers and tech geeks are talking about people like you. Second thing we know, 
is that we live in turbulent times and that not one of the big issues that we confront, COVID, the climate crisis, anti-democratic populism, institutionalized racism, inequalities of all kinds, not one of them is amenable to a quick technical fix. Every single one of them is fundamentally a social issue. Every single one of them requires careful thought, calm deliberation, and talking with rather than past each other. In short, right now, the world needs thinking people. And happily, for you, it turns out that the transferable skills that you need in order to find work in a changing labour market are exactly the same skills that the world needs if it is to address and to tackle the big issues. And every single one of them is something that you learnt in your qualification in our college. The capacity to hold conflicting ideas in your head. The ability to locate and to synthesise complex information. The patience to hold your peace and to listen to the point of view of another person, especially if that point of view is not one that you agree with. The willingness to walk around a gnarly issue and to make sense of it from different points of view. It's time to wrap up, because you didn't bring your sleeping bags. Look, I'm not trivialising the challenges that you face in finding work out there. I'm not suggesting that your path will always be easy. But you do graduate at a point in time when you are precisely what the world needs. If we are to rise to the challenges that we face, we need number eight fencing wire for the mind. We need people like you. You're on the right side of history. So walk across this stage and out into your futures with confidence and knowing that you made the right choice. Kia ora koutou. Thank you. Thank you, Richard, for your motivational and inspirational address. Having been in those three groups, a graduate a long time ago, and a parent, and now on the stage, and an employer, thank you for making all of those things really real, really good. Thank you very much. Okay, we are now going to continue with the conferment of degrees and uh, the award of university diplomas. Acting Chancellor, I have the honour <clears throat> to present for the Graduate Certificate in Teaching English as an Additional Language the candidate I'm about to name, Barry John Sargent. <laughs> Acting Chancellor, I have the honour to present for the Graduate Diploma in Arts the candidates I'm about to name. Renee April Hickel. <laughs> Helena Elizabeth Nickerson. <clears throat> Douglas John Stone <clears throat> Vana Suresh Chundran <clears throat> Veronica Rachel Van Woorden <clears throat> Amelia Tupo Lime Vakia. Oh, 
We'll start that again. <laughs> Acting Chancellor, the honor to present for the graduate diploma of teaching early childhood education, the candidates I'm about to name. Ashley Marie McFarlane. <laughs> Wen Xiong. <laughs> Acting Chancellor, I have the honor to present for the graduate diploma of teaching primary the candidates I'm about to name. Reese Shane Brosnan. Jordan Elizabeth Coulston. Rosalind Christine Dennis. L. Rose Duffy. Simi Daniel Filippo. <laughs> Bree Jamie Hitchman. <laughs> Claire Emothy, Emily Holdsworth. <laughs> Amelia Tupo Lime Vaca. Clara Ann Loray Lochen. <laughs> Hannah Rose McMillan. <laughs> David Samuel Meeking. <laughs> Ashley Jane Phillips. <laughs> Marie. K. Squire. <laughs> Therese Eileen Standish. <laughs> Ashley Nicole Tokley. <laughs> Samuel Grant Turner. Kemi Lynn Vecoso. <laughs> Nicola Jane Woods. <laughs> Acting Chancellor, I have the honor to present for the Graduate Diploma of Teaching Secondary, the candidates I'm about to name. Kieran Alexander Bryant. Rebecca Louise Davidson. <clears throat> Kelsey Jan Dempster. <clears throat> Harry David Peter Denning. <clears throat> James Blair Gilroy. <clears throat> Brooke Donna Merle Hooper. Gina Rochelle Kelly. <laughs> Stephanie? Stephanie Bianca May McKenzie. Nadia Wasam Amal Dashana. Dashana Punchihua. Tommy Wynn. Tommy? Tanil Joy Watt. James Robert Wright. <laughs> Sarah, 
Samuel Portahi Kenneth Wright. <clears throat> Acting Chancellor, I have the honour to present for the Postgraduate Diploma in Arts the candidates I'm about to name. Callista Miranda Rose Crooks with distinction. <laughs> Alessandra Ray Hawkins. <laughs> Mabel Mwaita Tabitha Mokombori Nwaya. Acting Chancellor, I have the honour to present for the Graduate Diploma in Education, the, grand <coughs> the graduands um, I'm about to name. Karen Marie Patterson. <clears throat> Katrina Sherilyn Wood. Acting Chancellor, I have the honour to present for the Postgraduate Diploma in International Development, the candidates I'm about to name. Jithu Susan Phillip. <clears throat> Laxwell Z. Chai. Acting Chancellor, I have the honour to present for the Postgraduate Diploma in Museum Studies, the candidate I'm about to name, Philip Rowley Lasalle. <clears throat> Acting Chancellor, I have the honour to present for the Taoa Pariwa Postgraduate Diploma, Teaching and Learning in Māori Medium, the candidate I'm about to name. Ashley Rangiapoi Marco. <clears throat> Marco Crawford, she's a recipient, recipient. <clears throat> Ashley is the recipient with distinction of the Titoi Huariwa Award for Te Aho Paerawa. <clears throat> Acting Chancellor, I have the honour to present for graduation in the degree of Bachelor of Arts with Honours, the graduands I'm about to name. Sarah Michelle Friel. Diana Waimari Haimi. <clears throat> Acting Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Master of Arts, the graduands I'm about to name. Cassie Marie Anderson with distinction. Hayley Marie Barber with distinction. <clears throat> Bria Donata Berry with distinction. <clears throat> Mark Ellen Colville with distinction. <clears throat> Shahid Samir Ilmatari. Melanie Margaret Ferguson with distinction. Aaron Malcolm Curriger. Harry Sean Tucker Lilly.
Orfi Gairi Muitas Mikalad. William Diggory Muirhead, with distinction, Maastricht Scholar. <laughs> Bronwyn Russell, with distinction. <laughs> Lisa Elizabeth Swale, with distinction. Acting Chancellor, I have the honour to present for graduation in the degree of Master of Education, the graduands I'm about to name. Stephanie Tanya Andrews. Anna Joan Brookie. Catherine Margreta Ellery. Cherie Angela Hughes. Amy Elizabeth Little, with distinction. Sarah Jane Morgan. Gichi Goto Oyanagi. Helen Deborah Parker. <laughs> Leslie Elizabeth Helen Scott. <laughs> Caitlin Elizabeth Soulsby with distinction. <clears throat> Hui Chi Zhou, with distinction. <laughs> Acting Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Master of Emergency Management, the graduand I'm about to name, Alexandra Claire Kurd. Acting Chancellor, I have the honour to present for graduation in the degree of Master of International Development, the graduands I'm about to name. Langifara Kaisami. <laughs> Ruby Louise Komeski McGruddy, with distinction. Alexandra Marie Alcaldi Santiago. <laughs> Joanna Eliana Thomas Maud with distinction. <laughs> Christine Whirl with distinction. <laughs> Acting Chancellor, I have the honour to present for graduation in the degree of Master of International Security, the graduands I'm about to name. Robert Brian Cato. <laughs> Janika Alexandra Ivalu. Martini Fatina Tavaki Maofu Otuitonga Vekuni. <laughs> Acting Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Master of Resource and Environmental Planning, the graduate I'm about to name, Bryony Kate Harding Hutchison. Acting Chancellor, I have the honour to present for graduation in the degree of Master of Specialist Teaching, the graduand I'm about to name. 
Kelly Joy Turner. With distinction. Acting Chancellor, the degrees are also conferred and the diplomas are also awarded to those who are in, ab in absentia. Thank you, Acting Chancellor. It is now my pleasure to invite the Kōtuku Irwin Stainton to make the valedictory address on behalf of the students. From Gisborne, Ngāti Poro, Te Kōtuku was Māori total immersion educated. From the age of one, she attended Kohanga Rao, Kura Kopapa, and then eventually entered into a bilingual unit in high school where she first learned how to read and write English at the age of 13. In recent presentations she's done for the British Commissioner on behalf of her iwi and hapu, she's detailed the difficulty of navigating Western critical thinking while struggling to stay authentic to being Maori. Currently, she works as an environmental strategist for her hapu of Ngāti Oneone in support of their attempts to restore the indigenous biodiversity of their ancestral Maunga, Moana and Awa. Known as Fahia Titarangi, the project is located in the centre of the Gisborne region. With the knowledge gained from her hapu, she aims to complete her Masters in Philosophy with a focus on decolonisation and climate change. Alongside her skills and experiences, she hopes to encourage other Māori to aspire to higher learning and higher education. Tonight, at the age of 23, you would have seen she's just graduated with a Bachelor of Arts in English and a minor in Māori Studies. Te koutuku. <clears throat> to the Vice Chancellor, faculty, Fano, friends, iwi, and hapu of Rangitani, and my fellow graduates, Tena Koto Katoa. It is an honour to be standing here addressing you all this evening. I would love to talk to you all about the very challenging journey that it took for us to get here, but you probably don't need me to remind you about the diet of noodles and pizza late night study sessions in the library if you knew at all where the library was <laughs> and the various mental breakdowns we had to endure over time. I am sure you are delighted to hear that I will not be going over these experiences in any detail. Tonight I would hope to give you a little push in your next journey of life. As the Vice Chancellor pointed out, I come from a large Māori learning environment. What I learned as a Māori student going into university with the different levels of unequal power within our education system and the desire to change it. But among many things, this journey has taught me to be versatile and confident in spaces that are vastly unfamiliar to people who look like me. You may be wondering why I raise this concern on a day that should be one of your happiest. The answer is simple. I encourage you all to embrace change confidently in the next journey of your life. After all, you are the product of an institution that changed its constitution to aspire to reflect a Tiriti constitution while you were still students here. That is one big change that you should all be proud of. But of course, there will also be times where you will experience unexpected terrain, no doubt, this year has already proven that for some of you. When I first entered into the space of Western tertiary education at the age of 17, I learned that such a level of change can only demonstrate that there are no limits to your strength and resilience. Given that you have all gotten this far, you should all be proud of the changes you have made to experience the joy of today. I only hope that you implore the changes that are ahead of you with confidence and humility. Kia koutou e whakaputa hia ana, you are now graduates of Te Kuninga Ki Pūrehurua of Massey University. Congratulations on this extraordinary achievement. 
Kia kaitau ngā tawira Māori, Pacifica anō hoki, tēnei te mihi nui ki a koutou katoa i eke mai i te whare wānanga. Nā koutou anō hoki i whakaranga tira ai i ngā wawata o o mātou mātua tipuna. Nō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Thank you, T. Kotuku, for your valedictory address. We're now going to continue with the conferment of doctoral graduates. Acting Chancellor, a doctorate, either a PhD or a professional named doctorate, is the highest research degree awarded by the university. The successful completion of a doctorate represents a significant achievement. Through the submission of a sustained piece of research expressed in the production of a written thesis of no more than 100,000 words, or a creative work of equivalent size and scope, or via a series of publications, candidates are expected to make an original contribution to knowledge in a specific field of study. Candidates will typically spend three to four years of full-time research solving a problem or addressing a particular set of questions. An international panel of experts then examines the resulting body of work through both written and oral examination. Doctoral research is challenging and represents a huge commitment to advancing research and scholarship. We honour the achievements of our doctoral graduates by inviting them to come onto the stage and join the stage party thereby formally welcoming them into the academy and scholarly community and acknowledging their entitlement to be called doctor. Acting Chancellor, I have the honour to present for graduation in the degree of Doctor of Clinical Psychology, the graduand I am about to name. Tamara Marie Matthews, Doctoral Scholar. Acting Chancellor, the process of breaking bad news about cancer is challenging for everyone involved. Ms Matthews interviewed patients, their whanau and healthcare professionals to get a fuller perspective on this process. Her findings highlighted the importance of a flexible and tailored approach, forming relationships, accessing support and sharing the responsibility to improve the bad news process. Acting Chancellor, Dr Matthews. Acting Chancellor, I have the honour to present for graduation in the degree of Doctor of Education, the graduands I am about to name. Jennifer Rebecca Roberts. The number of Māori nurses remains low and Māori nursing students do not have equity in nursing educational outcomes. Ms Roberts explored nursing education practices in working with Māori students. She found that environments and staff practices encompassing to ao Māori were enabling. However, colonising practices in education, racism and varied understandings and practices of cultural safety were barriers. Acting Chancellor, Dr Roberts. <laughs> Heather Gail Thomas. Contemplative education is increasingly used across the disciplines in universities to enhance critical thinking, creativity, compassion, attention, ethical engagement and well-being. Ms Thomas' research provides the first mapping of contemplative education in New Zealand 
and offers insights into how tertiary educators use, conceptualise and experience this kind of teaching. Acting Chancellor, Dr Thomas. Chancellor, I have the honour to present for graduation in the degree of Doctor of Philosophy the graduands I am about to name. Virginia Claire Adams. <laughs> Ms Adams' research brings to light a rare masculinised corner of global industry where women from a poor patriarchal country have surpassed basic empowerment thresholds. She explored links between investments in Timorese women's skills training and jobs in offshore oil and gas operations and their agency and achievements, revealing significant stability in psychosocial areas of their empowerment. Acting Chancellor, Dr Adams. Christine Louise Braid. <laughs> Ms Braid studied the difference that teachers could make to address ongoing problems with reading achievement for many children. She found that reading outcomes improved when teachers had high levels of knowledge about written code and when they used an explicit and systematic teaching approach. The findings are important for suggesting how to teach reading so that all children can experience success. Acting Chancellor, Dr Braid. Zia Uzi, Laini, Ilayu. <laughs> Scholars have debated the nature of paramount authority in ancient Tonga. Mr. Ilayu combined oral traditions with archival research in a region-wide survey that transcended current comparative approaches and aimed to critique historical orthodoxy. He demonstrated that current academic literature is anachronistic and ahistorical and proposed a new research method that could better demonstrate the process of political change. Acting Chancellor, Dr. Ilayu. Geraldine Anne McCarthy, Doctoral Scholar. <laughs> Demand for English language learning, or ELL, has markedly intensified alongside increases in immigration. Mrs McCarthy used an ecological perspective to investigate the macro, meso and micro contexts surrounding ELL provision in three state secondary schools. Results confirmed that belief systems generated from colonialism, tomorrow's schools and New Zealand's bicultural status situate ELL management decisions and generate compromises for staff and students working in ELL fields. Acting Chancellor, Dr McCarthy. Fiona Mary McCurgo. <laughs> Ms McCurgo investigated textiles that belonged to British women who migrated to Aotearoa, New Zealand in the mid 19th century. Her findings demonstrate the way in which textiles were integral to the making of relationships, identities and experiences in the context of settler uh, colon Colonialism, 
Acting Chancellor, Dr. McCurgo. Janet Elizabeth Newman, Doctoral Scholar. <laughs> New Zealand's tradition of eco-poetry in English was essentially invisible. Ms Newman investigated this tradition from the 19th century, including three case studies of contemporary work and a collection of original eco-poems. She found tensions about how culture and ecology are imagined which challenge some established conceptions of eco-poetry. Acting Chancellor, Dr. Newman. <laughs> Christina Lalai Tosa. The power struggle between the conflicting paradigms of democracy and Samoa's traditional leadership system of Whamatai prevents genuine and responsive partnerships and processes from developing. Ms Toza's study offers up the process of architectronics as a solution to harmonise the tension between the two systems. Acting Chancellor, Dr Toza. Veronica Makere Hupane Tafai. Acting Chancellor, teaching and learning about indigeneity, including indigenous rights, decolonisation, settler colonialism and indigenous resistance, has unique challenges. Ms Tafai determined what constitutes best practice-based practices from senior expert um, indigeneity educators across the USA, Canada, Hawaii, Australia and Aotearoa. Her findings provide new guidelines for educators in this field on curriculum, pedagogy, praxis, and transformative citizenship education. Acting Chancellor, Dr. Tafai. Suliasi Vunibola. An assertion within the Pacific Islands is that customary land is an impediment to economic development. Mr. Vunibola research shows how indigenous Fijian communities are able to utilise their customary land to establish successful businesses, upholding community practices and values. This emphasises the value of customary land as an intergenerational resource that aids self-determined and inclusive community development. Chancellor, Dr. Vunibula. Thank you, Acting Chancellor. Would all our graduates please stand?
He honore nui te whakatau atu i a koutou, hei raukua o te kuninga ki pūre huroa. It is my great honour to welcome you as alumni of Massey University. The award of a university degree carries many privileges, but like all privileges, it also carries responsibilities. I charge you as graduates of Massey University to use what you have learnt for your own betterment and for the benefit of your communities. I charge you to use the skills and knowledge you have acquired with rigour and integrity and to commit yourselves to a program of lifelong learning and discovery. I charge you to remember the lessons Massey University has taught you about the worth of others, particularly those who've not had the opportunities that you have had. I charge you to set goals and to continue the hard work that has brought you so far. And in all that you do, I charge you to be deserving of the good name of Massey University. Congratulations. Please be seated. Thank you, Vice-Chancellor. Um, at the conclusion of the ceremony, guests are requested to remain in their seats until the processions have left the auditorium. I declare this congregation to be adjourned. Please join with us in singing the national anthem, God Defend New Zealand, the words of which are printed on the screen. Would you please stand?
Thank you.